everyone. This is Chetna and welcome to Chet Chat, one of the largest career and education shows. And today, I'm at the Indian School of Hospitality in Gurgaon. And today, I'm going to check out this institute for you and give you the feel of a life of a student at ISH. So if you want to become a chef or you want to do a holistic undergraduate program in hospitality, or you're looking to set up your own restaurant, then you want to watch this video right till the end. And there's another reason that you want to watch this video right till the end, because we've got a contest coming up. There are going to be three questions I'm going to ask you at different points in the video, and you're going to find the answers also in the video. And the winner is going to get a dinner for two at a luxury hotel in your city. And let me take you right into ISH. I'm here at the breakfast table, taking you in to meet the academic director, Rajiv Kavasji. So, hey Rajiv. Hey, morning, how are you? So, Rajiv, honestly, when I came in here, I was expecting an academic institution. And what I see is actually a seven-star hotel, which houses an institution. So, in that respect, would you like to say something? So, we are a large operation where actually um, education is happening. It's real-time learning, so they are well prepared for their first internships. So, let's Come talk on. about the programs. The students are interested in the three programs that you have. So, Chetna, we have three programs here. Basically, we do a four-year degree in culinary arts. We also do a four-year hospitality degree. And then we have a one-year intensive culinary arts program. The focus for the one-year program is to make the student ready from pretty much zero, no background, okay. to pretty much what you would accomplish in three years in a technical culinary kind of a program. The two four-year programs are typically degree programs. In right. the, um, so we have a partnership with Eco Hotelier Lausanne, which uh, offers a certification because it is their curriculum which we sort of uh, are implementing at ISH. But as well as there is a degree component from an Indian affiliated uh, institute. Right. But let's talk about your four-year hospitality undergraduate program. Our programs tend to morph into more of a management uh, kind of a program. There's a lot of entrepreneurship focus. There's marketing, finance, business, design. The core skilling happens in the first year, we call it a preparatory year. So can I say it's like a BBA program plus a finishing school, uh, getting them ready for customer service oriented jobs across service industries? You could use that analogy. Typically, uh, our management emphasis would at least mirror 60% of a BBA, uh, traditional BBA program. But it has a specific focus on entrepreneurship, right. uh, that aspect which is probably missing uh, in, in a, a BBA uh, yes. program. So with our philosophy of experiential and hands-on real-time learning um, and the way we are set up and we design and we deliver our curriculum, typically the student uh, learns uh, some kind of theory in the classroom and then he goes and delivers it downstairs immediately because there is an infrastructure set up for that. So thank you so much and I need to rush. I've got this bakery class waiting for me. I need to get into my chef dress. Yes, you got to change. I'll do that right away. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So chef, how difficult is it to actually become a chef? It's a lot of hard work. Trust me, these days everybody uh, wants to be a... I can see that. Oh, okay. absolutely. It's a lot of hard work, a lot of long hours. It's purely about passion. As you said, baking is so therapeutic in nature. Really? I'm loving it. I go it. through the same thing every day. This is amazing. So I've got students who are mm -hmm. in, let's say, 12th grade. Mm -hmm. And they're thinking of probably becoming a chef. They're mm -hmm. inspired by the master chef program that they see on television. Mm -hmm. They want to set up their own bakery. So you don't need a very specific background as such that you need to be from science or you need to be from... Uh, commerce background okay. you just need to be a 12th, 12th standard uh, pass and then you can pursue this knowledge about finance knowledge about accounts knowledge about science health and literature. so let's look at the pastry arts in general mm -hmm. what are the kinds of careers that students could look at once they do a course like now, this now pastry happens to be a very huge and a diversified line with chocolate with sugar with petit pots with the uh, jellies with cookies and so much stuff so you can go on to become a chocolatier you can go on to become a sugar artist you can go on to become now these days those big fondant cakes are yeah. such a craze yeah. so you can go on to become a cake artist and eventually at the end of the day you can go on to become a pastry chef who runs this entire brigade and talk about the program that you have here i mean i know it's very exciting to learn the skill mm -hmm. 
but the combination of the skill and the talent that they get in their classrooms, uh, how does that work? So somebody who's looking to be an entrepreneur, obviously the skill makes a lot of difference because it eventually is going to be the backbone of the entire operation. But at the same time, the business aspect of the entire operation is equally important. He should be able to market the food properly, okay. put it on the relevant platforms. And hence, ISH in a lot of its semesters has incorporated a lot of modules wherein they are taught sales and marketing, they are taught food photography, they are taught about nutrition, they are taught about menu planning, they are taught about the business aspect called culinary math, I think wow. the management. So as I said, it's an overall package wherein you are just not taught about how to make a beautiful cake, but at the same time how to sell that beautiful cake, yes, how yes. to procure the right kind of ingredients so it gives you a healthy profit margin at the end of the, end day. Of the day. So it's contest time now. There are three questions that will come up at any time during the video. And the answers to the questions also you will find when the speakers are talking about the institute. And you're going to win a luxury dinner for two in a city of your choice anywhere in India. Now what do you have to do? Once you get all the three answers, you need to send an email to the address given in the description box below. Give us your name, your contact number and the city that you live in. And good luck. Welcome to IC Training Kitchen. Thank you, Chef Moeb. So, what are we going to be doing today? We are doing a couple of things. We have a Lebanese menu uh, going on, and okay. we are also doing a French classic French menu. Uh, there are two teams. Oops. Yeah. So you just have to be very gentle when yeah. you are placing the eggshells in the container because they might crack. So chef, this was really, a, it looked easy, but it wasn't. It needed yeah. a degree of skill to it. But tell me, you worked at some of the most amazing restaurants around the world. So what inspired you to come to ISH? ISH uh, is the philosophy and the mindset. In India, I've uh, worked at different schools and uh, it's more of a 9 to 5 job where you're just cooking from 9 to 1 and you're done for the day. Uh, but here we are doing a lot of hands-on cooking. Students are also cooking from day one. And uh, we do a lot of events and outbound dining events. So uh, there's a lot of uh, practice which is mm. there and uh, it's more like an operational job. So that's what inspired me. And of course the kitchen setup. Uh, yeah, I've got yeah. uh, what I wanted uh, yeah. in terms of equipment and everything. Um, mind you, the, even some of the professional chefs are quite jealous of the setup we have really? here. Really? Yes, so they even they kind of like always want to come and uh, do demonstrations here. Super. So tell me, Chef, you're this aspirational role model for some of our students watching the show. What advice would you want to give them? They want to become a chef. What are some of the things they should keep in mind? Being passionate about food and cooking is one thing, but working professionally as yeah. a chef is quite demanding. Yeah. So my advice would be to actually intern for three days and see for yourself and then sign up for a course. Sure, that's yeah. great advice actually. Okay, so we've had a busy morning. We went into the bakery and then it was lunchtime. I was behind the live counter and it's time for a well-deserved lunch break. So join me while I chat chat with some students over lunch. So see you there. How exciting! This lovely food that we cooked today. I love it. <laughs> Trisha, talk about yourself. You're doing the hospitality program uh, too. Yeah, so actually what I wanted to do was something food related. And I actually also aspire to be a chef but I just want to keep my options open. So I wanted to discover what the industry has to hold and to offer. So I've always been interested in cooking and it's been my passion. So that is exactly why I joined ISS and this was my dream course. So tell me if there's a student who has no experience in culinary mm -hmm. but is interested, can they still join the program or do you think it will sort of intimidate of them? Of course they can join the course because you don't need to know everything before joining college. So at the end of our semester, there's actually a 2 plus 2 program which uh, enables the students of HMP 
to do two years here and then two years abroad in Switzerland oh, wow. uh, at EHL. Okay. So um, the person who tops our batch or the first two people get a full scholarship to go there for two um, whole years. Yeah, for two whole years wow. in Switzerland. So that's wow. I think a big deal, and yeah. I think all of us are Aspiring quite. Uh, for it. Yeah, we're aiming yeah. for it. And there's also like a um, smaller scholarships, which um, are like about 30, 35 percent of the fees. So, okay. so that's a option again. So on a parting note, what is that one thing you would want to tell students that you wish somebody had told you before you joined? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I would actually tell everyone that it's not as intimidating as it looks. This industry has long hours but and all this fancy equipment and like blades and all of that, they're not as difficult as they look. And let's quickly go and attend some classes now. We've got to go, let's rush. Yeah. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> Question number one, what are the three different courses that are currently being offered by the Indian School of Hospitality? So we've had a morning full of activities in the bakery and in the food hall and it's time for some academics. So I'm taking you across to meet Neha, the Assistant Dean of Applied Learning. Hey Neha. Hi Chetna, lovely meeting you. I know, me too. <laughs> and what a beautiful campus and I've had a great morning. So tell me, you're looking after Applied Learning. Yes. So what exactly is Applied Learning in the context of ISH? Okay. I believe that hospitality cannot be taught in just a classroom. It's a philosophy or a culture that you need to imbibe in yourself. And that's where applied learning really comes in. Having a lot of industry speakers to come in, speak to them, for example. Having a lot of student events or engagements with the industry constantly. So they know where they're heading after the four years of their program. Right. In fact, talking about the after the four years of the program, yeah. you have a unique internship model. Yes. So would you share something about that with us? We kind of realized that the biggest challenge in the industry today is that the talent that comes in is pretty much unprepared. So the institution's role, of course, begins by at the admissions level to get the right kind of people in right. who are really, truly passionate about hospitality and can see a future for themselves. And also to have the right kind of academics. Eventually, the vision is that some of these companies should be able to see such value in our students that they end up getting placement offers way before they actually graduate, graduate yeah. eventually. Yeah. But that's so, fantastic because going back to the internships that we had yeah. is you could just go to this company and do whatever they asked you to do. Absolutely. And nobody in your institute actually ever found out A, what you did there and Absolutely. B, if there is a connect at all with what you learned. True in your academics so the fact that you're getting every student an internship yeah. and when they're going there and you're, you're checking all of this and sort of bringing looping it back into the academics I think it's phenomenal yeah so I like to call it the reverse philosophy so all the facilitators are actually qualified learner, learning facilitators which is a qualifying program from EHL okay so a class probably will not really be an instruction driven class but would be more engaging in terms of the questioning techniques that we have or a class would be completely dependent on role plays or different kinds of group activities so for example any customer front focusing uh, industry or a service based industry could pick up transferable skills like critical thinking problem solving being able to speak to people very confidently uh, are things that are very very uh, you know, at the core of yeah, the hotel yeah. industry. I can see handling stressful situations. Yeah, you've got a customer waiting <laughs> and you know, your dish is suddenly not turning out the way true, it should have. True. So, uh, so those are the kind of skills that are now required uh, across industries. Now, in this is industry. a great opportunity for students. Mm -hmm. I have a class with Dilip right away. Oh, wow. Yes. That's awesome. I'm going to head out right now for it. Yeah, great. I think there's an assignment waiting for me. <laughs> <laughs> But see you soon. Right. Thank you so much. Bye. Question number two. Which international institute does the Indian School of Hospitality have a collaboration with?
So I just sneaked out of Dilip sir's class, which was very interesting and it was all about the internships that all of us are going to go into quickly. But I'm going to take you to meet the co-founder of the institute, Pralad Puri. Hey Pralad. Hi Chitna, how are you doing? So I've had a gorgeous day at your beautifully designed campus. Thank you so much. So let's talk about the design and you. You've had a big role to play. In fact, this avenue behind us makes me feel like I'm in a street in Brussels or something. But yeah. tell us about your thoughts on this. We created three very distinct design-based areas. Okay. We created your hospitality spaces, which is anything that's service-led. And that's what you'd see on the ground floor here, where you have your lobby and welcome center experience right. areas, your all-day dining, right. uh, which we call the food hall, right. your fine dining spaces. These are all your front of house areas that would be typical to any hospitality environment. You look at an airport lounge or a hotel um, or some high-end banks, you know, that's how they put together. Okay. The second space, which um, you experienced earlier today, was the kitchen spaces. Yes. They're yes. training areas, um, but they're designed in a very commercial running operating way hmm. what that does is it's it's almost mirroring your live environment yes but it still has that comfort of this is a space i can learn and make mistakes yeah the third space which is where we are right now is um what we call the ish avenue and the academic block this was where we brought in that whole new age google inspired um, you know w hotels inspired kind of blend because a lot of new working environments are funky they're yeah. about critical thinking they're yeah. about thinking outside the box yeah and also i i believe you're a big tech buff i am yeah. indeed, yes. so tell us how you brought all of that into this campus as well so in the kitchens where you work today we have camera systems that can record anything and everything happening in those spaces for students to be able to go back to later and um, review what they've learned um, similarly we've put in a lot of uh, beam in technologies through the campus so mm -hmm. whether you're sitting in your food hall or in a classroom, or in the lecture theatre, you could have industry experts sitting anywhere in the world beaming in and speaking to you. The whole idea behind this is that in today's day and age, uh, connectivity is key. Yes. And if we can't utilize that in the education space to allow our students to broaden their horizons beyond the classroom, um, then we're really not doing what uh, we set out to. Yeah. The classroom in which you attended uh, Mr. Puri's lecture yes, right now, that's yes. about to be transformed into a uh, a virtual classroom as well, so students mm -hmm. can access the lectures from anywhere and everywhere. Wow. So technology for us will be an ongoing process. Fantastic. You mentioned that some of the students were looking at becoming entrepreneurs. And so what is your advice to them as they step out of the institute? The one piece of advice that I would say is key for anybody to imbibe is always say yes. Um, opportunities are scarce, they're seldom. Um, sometimes something that may seem like something you'd pass, pass over uh, may just be the game changer that your life has been waiting for. So wow. say yes, say yes wow. to everything because okay. everything you say yes to will lead to an experience. Wow, fantastic. I love this piece about say yes and then figure out how you're going to solve the problem. Always. Yeah, but thank you so much for, Lance, for being you, with us. <laughs> I need to go across quickly and talk to Dilip about his vision as well right away. Perfect. So classes are over and I'm doing after class participation with the founder, Mr. Dilip Puri. So Mr. Puri, what was your philosophy actually of setting up this institution? Uh, clearly the philosophy was that how do you provide students an environment to learn in which would mirror the environment they're going to go and work in. Uh, to create graduate profiles who can seamlessly enter industry. So whether it's the quality of the equipment in our kitchens, or whether it's the quality of the technology we use here, or whether it's just the look feel of the ambience here. Right. So almost all of them are um, pretty clear that anybody who's their peer in another hotel school would never get to work with this quality of equipment. That's true, that's true. Also looking a bit beyond the hotels, as I've realized spending my entire day here that Hospitality is a life skill. When we looked at our curriculums, as you know, we are a Ecole Hotelier Lausanne accredited school. So our curriculums are very mirrored and mapped with what is taught and how it's taught in Switzerland. If you think about it, hospitality exists in almost every customer centric business. Yes, yes. You could be working for a bank. Yes. You could be working for an airline. You could be working in retail. Wherever there's customer centricity, you're expected to have an understanding and a foundation of hospitality. So 
when you think of luxury, think of working for Louis Vuitton. Mm, mm. When you think of the food industry, mm. think of working for Nestle, think of working for PepsiCo. When you think of technology, think of working for a Make My Trip. Yes. Think of working for a Zomato or a Swiggy. Mm, mm. Now, these are all technically different sectors, different industries, but right. all have a common thread of hospitality. Yes, absolutely. Right? You look at the real estate sector. Mm. You look at the events and entertainment industry. You look at the fashion and lifestyle industry. These are all new sunrise sectors, uh, which are the future. Yes. So as we look at the statistics, the largest numbers of young students finding jobs are in all of the industries that you just mentioned. Uh, at Lausanne, for example, in Switzerland, less than 30% of students graduating actually go into mainstream operations of hotels. Interesting. Less than 30%. Less than 30%. Interesting. 70% of them work with all kinds of industries. Like oh. I said, uh, the luxury watch industry right. in Switzerland, banks. Yes. I mean, uh, Credit Suez and UBS go and campus hire at Lausanne. So, from something as simple as how to walk, how to talk, how to look, how to dress, how to interact, how to present, how to build relationships, how to communicate, these are what I call life skills. Absolutely. They are skills which we are building in our students, not for their first jobs, but to last them their life. Yes. In fact, in fact, I go to the extent of saying that. Our own selection criteria for students, for example, we really couldn't care what your board results were. Mm -hmm. You need a high school diploma, yes. Right. Where we want to bring in students who have the passion, the talent, the attitude, uh, and we will help them develop the skills. I think an education in hospitality just opens up the whole world for you. Right. Question number three. Design-wise, what are the three distinct spaces or zones within the ISH building. Now your time starts right now. If you have all the three answers, quickly send us an email at the address given in the description box below the video and win yourself a luxury dinner for two at any city across India. And keep watching the video because there may be an answer that's coming up after this as well. day to day full of classes, assignments and homework and we've worked really hard on an event that's coming up this evening. It's a holy event and I'm all excited to go down for it. So come join me for that. my student accommodation which is run by Coho and I'm going to introduce you to Sweetie who's the director of admissions who's going to tell us all about this exciting student living concept. So Sweetie this is so amazing yes. this road looks like a street out of Europe Yes. and I wish I could have lived here back when I was in college. Most but of us do, <laughs> most of us do. <laughs> but tell me more about this space. So where we stand is known as the Signature Avenue. Signature Avenue is one of the most premium, it's actually the most premium part of the 800 acre township of Vatika India Next. Oh. This is a gated security which mm -hmm. means that nobody can enter and exit without prior permission from the villa owner or the residents here. It's only three kilometers diagonally from our campus. 
we have three villas for the boys on that side and the villa behind us is for the girls um, apart from that everything is cctv camera covered uh, we have um, a warden on duty which is 24 hours mm -hmm. there's something more that this part of the township brings which is a whole community living okay now the students have come so far from their families um, and they feel this is a home away from home there are restrictions on timings for what students can come and go Another very important measure that ISH has taken is uh, we have our own fleet of cars and drivers which ah. means that we do not allow the students to venture on their own. Right. So there's no hitchhiking? Nothing, okay. nothing. The cars will pick the students up in the morning, take them to the campus and bring them back in the evening. Hmm. We also have a career counsellor um, who comes from a psychology background wow. to be able to counsel students about their well-being and welfare at all times on campus. Super. So pastoral support, Absolutely. mentoral support. Yes security to me that is very crucial because it is i know some of the parents watching the show will probably think good girl my daughter nobody can and we have our own dedicated security guards right here outside the villas for the boys and the girls right, right so yeah. nobody can enter and every villa has biometric system ah. Don't worry so let's that. go right in let's go okay. Hey, so I've had a really exciting, exhausting, enriching, but fulfilling day today at ISH. I hope you enjoyed as much as I did today. And if you want to know anything more about the ISH campus, about admissions or enrollment, all the details are given in the description box under the video. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel.